2019 saw significant growth and progress at the European Patent Office, which would help the EPO face the challenges that unfolded in 2020. At the beginning of 2019, the European Patent Office undertook one of the most extensive consultation processes ever conducted at a European organization. We asked our stakeholders how we could meet their expectations in the future. The shared vision of sustainability that emerged was captured in the strategic plan. It recognized EPO staff as the current custodians of an office capable of delivering excellence for generations to come. After its adoption in June 2019, our journey in pursuit of five clear goals began. A Corporate Governance Service, CGS, was established to oversee the programs and projects. In 2019, two initial calls for project managers were made to staff across the organization. Over 300 colleagues applied for just 34 positions. Today, there are more than 150 program and project managers working on subjects that range from digitizing the patent grant process to mastering the prior art. A balanced scorecard and monitoring tool was also rolled out, helping us to assess the impact of the programs and our progress towards our goals at every level of our organization. Identifying and recruiting talent has been the focus of our talent acquisition initiatives. Participating to 17 job fairs in 16 different countries, funding women scientists and engineers from those underrepresented member states, promoting job mobility with internal job fairs, for example, for examiners, formality officers, and team managers, and also onboarding 50 new young graduates as part of our Pan European SEAL program. Building a learning organization has been the focus of our talent development initiatives promoting continuous learning with new development programs, making sure that these customized learning journeys provide the possibility for our colleagues to acquire the right skills so that they can do the current job, but also be ready for any future challenge, changes in processes or tools. And finally, digitalizing our learning environment. With the launch of new online learning platforms, we provide our colleagues greater flexibility when learning. Under Goal 1, there was also continued focus on social dialogue. Over 100 meetings were held between staff representatives and management. And while agreement couldn't be found on everything, there was convergence on subjects such as resources for staff representatives, which now allow staff committee chairmen to allocate more working time to their activities, as well as on performance development. Many outstanding complaints against the office were also settled amicably in 2019. Direct discussions between senior management and staff also increased, as a direct result of the lessons learned from the staff engagement survey. And focus groups were formed to tackle a range of further subjects. To better support all our staff and our users, a full digital transformation was needed following an external IT audit. And a new unit for Business Information Technology, or BIT, was created in May 2019. It was part of a broad restructuring, the most extensive ever undertaken by the office, that also saw flatter and more collaborative structures implemented in other departments. Diego Egidazu summed up the spirit of change in BIT. First thing that we would really like to bring is the clear message that we're in this together. Okay? From BIT, what does that mean? That means we need to open the doors uh, create transparency. Okay, we, th we really think it's important for everyone to see what is going on. You need to be part of this, not as a spectator, not as someone that takes note and moves on, but as someone who's part of that journey. BIT also began ambitious programs to upgrade our IT infrastructure and to fast-track paperless solutions for the patent granting process solutions that the EPO would come to rely on sooner than expected. The digital transformation was underway. An IT delivery highway was developed based on a new cloud-native architecture, using Kubernetes for an agile and continuous IT product delivery, mainly to accelerate the release cycles. Tools were improved for examiners and users. The EPO's overly complex landscape of legacy systems and applications started to be simplified. 
and a focus was maintained on making our organization's IT platforms future-proof, geared towards system availability, modern architectures, and better security. Meanwhile, the timeliness of search, examination, and opposition all improve, supported by the office's staff and their access to vast collections of prior art and powerful search tools. Some 96.8% of international searches were completed on time. Comparing performance in 2019 with that for 2018, the mean time for search was reduced by a whole month. The mean time for examination fell by about three and a half months, and that for opposition came down by about six weeks. Our working party on quality was expanded to include more participants from both European and IP5 user associations. Our quality management system was once again confirmed as fit for purpose, and a more collaborative approach was introduced to quality beyond the established three examiner divisions. Access to patent information also increased with the release of new SPASnet, improving access to the world's largest free collection of patent documents, over 120 million of them. Improvements were also made to the EPO's own internal databases of prior art, keeping the ever-expanding volumes of technical documents indexed for accurate retrieval is central to the quality of EPO searches, so the EPO has invested further in classification. The classification backlog was reduced to zero, a first major milestone in the Mastering the Prior Art program. And knowledge-sharing network events and training were organized to support better quality. Meanwhile, rigorous monitoring has continued. The number of compliant search reports hit 97%. New checks were carried out by formalities offices, and opposition procedures also came under the scope of our quality control. And the Directorate Quality Audit confirmed a growing upward trend in quality, a trend which is being carefully scrutinized to make sure it continues in the long term, through actions such as a new Commitment to Quality program. These quality initiatives have contributed to the growing attractiveness of the European patent system and of the EPO's products. In 2019, the EPO signed a new validation agreement with Georgia and additional reinforced partnership agreements with Brazil, Argentina and Mexico, as well as Indonesia and Malaysia, and Ethiopia and the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization. As a result of these and other agreements, the office's work products are now recognized in territories with a total population of 1.9 billion people. A further breakthrough came in November 2019, when we signed a historic agreement with the China National Intellectual Property Administration. Chinese applicants filing in English with the CNIPA as their receiving office will therefore be able to select the EPO as their international searching authority when a two-year pilot starts later this year. This makes the EPO the first patent office outside of China to be designated as ISA for Chinese applicants. Creating value for our users continues to be one of the guiding principles for European cooperation. In consultation with our member states, the four main pillars upon which the EPO's cooperation policy now rests were reaffirmed in Kilkenny in spring 2019. A first round of bilateral cooperation visits to all member states took place in summer 2019. We have since continued to make progress on harmonizing procedural differences between national patent offices and on IT support, where seven initial projects have been prioritized. Action was also felt to be needed to ensure the EPO's financial sustainability. A study by external consultants forecasts the emergence of a 5.8 billion euro funding gap over the next 20 years. After an extensive consultation process with staff, an ongoing dialogue with staff representatives, 
A package of measures was finalized based on six key principles. As a result, we believe we are now on course for a more sustainable financial future, one in which we can offer staff an attractive social package while still covering our future liabilities. In order to remain on course, the EPO evaluated the use of 17 possible levers to close the funding gap. The most suitable six levers were chosen to secure the EPO's long-term financial autonomy. Great strides were also made in environmental sustainability. The EPO installed bicycle parks and charging stations for e-cars and e-bikes to promote greener transport. Finally, we are on course to reach the targets required to maintain and to improve the office's eco-management and audit scheme certification. We also aim to obtain the highest level of green building certification for all our premises. Meanwhile, the Boards of Appeal signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the EPO to further reinforce governance. Another MOU was agreed with the Administrative Council to provide greater support for its Secretariat. Just six months after adopting the strategic plan, progress was being made in all five goals. The Office was successfully managing an increase in filings. The EPO received over 181,000 patent applications in total, 4% more than in 2018 and a new all-time high. And the number of granted patents rose by 8%. But then came a crisis few could have foreseen. One that threatened our core business the fulfilment of our duties under the European Patent Convention and even the health of our staff. At the turn of 2020, the world faced the sudden outbreak of COVID-19. By March 11, the World Health Organization had declared a pandemic. Fortunately, the EPO had already started to take action as early as January by establishing a coronavirus task force to coordinate the response. Overall, we had three goals. First and foremost, to protect the health of our staff. Secondly, to play our part in society's efforts to stop the spread of the virus. And thirdly, to ensure business continuity for our users. Social distancing meant that most staff had to work from home, many for the first time. So we undertook the fastest expansion of teleworking facilities in the EPO's history. The rollout of new laptops was also massively accelerated. Data bandwidth increased when our new data center in Luxembourg came online in March. Digital workflow solutions for both search and examination were deployed on future-proof platforms and by mid-April 2020, up to 80% of the staff were working remotely. We also held major events digitally, like the Member States' 14th annual meeting on cooperation in May and our monthly forum for managers and staff to discuss the digital transformation of the EPO. Flexibility was the order of the day, especially when it came to helping staff take care of work and family commitments. Core working hours were waived and the office's IT tools were kept available for more hours each day so staff could work at those times which suited them best. Ergonomics advisors assisted colleagues remotely with optimizing their home office setup and staff were even allowed to take home equipment such as chairs and monitors. Others with specialist expertise provided webinars on various aspects of the coronavirus itself as well as on how to combine teleworking with parenting and homeschooling. Also, not to be forgotten, there was support for those colleagues who were temporarily stranded outside of their host countries and sometimes far away from home. To fulfill our obligations under the European Patent Convention, the EPO facilitated oral proceedings by VICO for examination and opposition hearings. Remedies were also offered to users in case of non-observance of time limits. And we continued to make progress on convergence in IT cooperation with member states, despite the crisis. A more united office started to emerge in response to these challenges. Employees found entertaining ways to put a smile on each other's faces. Staff supported one another, colleagues held virtual coffee meetings, 
and the president spoke with almost 600 staff in team meetings in just a few weeks. The commitment of the staff and their team spirit, as well as the enhanced collaboration, greater agility and flatter structures brought by the strategic plan, had enabled the office to continue even in these unprecedented circumstances. Production remained on target. Timeliness was unaffected. Now, the changes have forced us to question whether things will ever be the same again. We're analyzing the experiences of our colleagues in these testing times and keeping a close eye on a possible downturn in incoming patent applications. Changes we had hoped to make over the next three years have been achieved in the past three months. Now we want to capitalize on this momentum. We're reflecting on the full implications of the new normal. Together with staff, users and our member states, we will develop a roadmap. Why? So we can continue to deliver for all our stakeholders in a changed world. So we can support scientists and researchers who hold the key to facing these medical challenges. So we can develop a patent system that nurtures the recovery of the global economy. So we can contribute to a safer, smarter and more sustainable world based on the same values that helped us overcome recent challenges. Trust, fairness, mutual respect, adaptability, collaboration, and above all, a commitment to excellence.